right guys so we got another Bronco review today and this one is a Badlands Area 51 and non Sasquatch it looks so so good let's take a view of the front here look at that oh can't wait to review it and we are just right now Just want to say thank you to Airport Ford in Hamilton, Ontario for allowing me to review this Badlands Bronco. If you have any questions or if you want to come take it out for a test drive, let me know. Alrighty, so I am here with the Area 51 Badlands. Now, again, this is non-Sasquatch. It's got a lot of great options that mimic kind of a Sasquatch, but is not. So one thing we'll start with is the bumper. Now, this one has the modular front metal bumper, which personally I like a lot better and is standard on the Badlands. Now one thing, I have not seen a Badlands yet, but I actually really like the carbonized gray grill as opposed to the black on the wild track. I just think it looks really good in contrast with the carbonized gray roof and also the fenders. So I don't know, that's just my opinion, but I do like that front carbonized gray grill. Again, here we have that nice signature Bronco headlamp, 360 camera, because this does have the uh, lugs pack, so it includes the mid and the high. And then here is the other side as well. Now, like I said before, this does not have the Sasquatch. It does have the 33-inch BF Goodrich tires on it, but it does have the 17-inch beadlock rims on them as well, which look like a Sasquatch, but just doesn't have the 35-inch tires. They're 33. So we'll start here in the front. Like that metal bumper here. It does have parking sensors as well. Give you a little bit of a look underneath here of the suspension components. Now this does have disconnecting sway bar links. So uh, it does have the sway bar disconnect button, which we'll show you inside. And here's another look at the front grill. Another thing cool with Bronco are your hood trail sights. So these are rated here for about 150 pounds, which says here on the side. And they look pretty good when you are driving. Just nice little beefy look to it, the hood as well. This one does not have the sticker on the hood as the wild track did or both wild tracks did on my video. So just a little bit of a cleaner look, especially on the area 51, which is pretty much my favorite color. Now it's pretty much it for the front. Let's actually dive deep into the 2.7 motor, which this one is optioned with. Alrighty. So hopping into the motor here of the Badlands, this one is optioned with the 2.7 liter turbocharged motor producing 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque made it to the 10-speed auto. I got a lot of hate on my last video because I apparently had the horsepower and torque numbers wrong. Those numbers were provided from Ford back ago when the Bronco came out and they actually just recently changed them. So those numbers I said to you, the 330 and the 415 are actually with premium fuel in it. Actually, I think it's 94. So those are the numbers, like I said, with premium fuel. But this is the motor here. Now the nice thing is too, with this motor, I've driven the Sasquatch with uh, the 2.7. Now I find with this particular setup, without Sasquatch, the 33s and the final drive in the back, the 4.46, I find it is a little bit more torque here and it's got a little bit more pull um, as opposed to the Sasquatch with the 4.7 and the 35s. Something to note, obviously, when you, when you test drive them, if you get a chance, but I did find that this one would be a little bit more torquier and the pull of the motor was a little bit faster. So that is one thing to note. But that's pretty much it for the front here of the Badlands. Let's take a look around the exterior. All right, so heading around the Bronco Badlands. So one thing to note when you see the orange badge here that says Badlands, it is a Badlands trim. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, these are the BF Goodridge all-terrain tires with the 17-inch beadlock rims. So they kind of, again, mimic somewhat of the Sasquatch package, but they're 33s as opposed to 35s. I'll show you a little bit of the suspension inside here. I actually like these tires a lot. The BF Goodridges are awesome. They drive very well, and there is not much noise to them. Now, the Badlands does come standard with the rock rail, which I think gives it a little bit more of a cleaner look as opposed to having just the rivets of the of the body just sticking out. So that's one thing to note. Like the mirrors on the cowl here on Broncos, it is very interesting when you first start driving them, but you do get the hang of it. And the benefit of that is obviously when it's not mounted on the door, when you take the door off, you still have your mirrors as opposed to the Jeeps. 
One thing too, when you do notice, when you are looking on the passenger side, I find it is a little blocked by the A-pillar, but it's nothing too crazy. It's nothing like where you can't see. It's just that I find a little bit of a, a blockage there. These ones have just kind of like a plastic look to them too. They aren't in like black or anything. They're just plastic as well as the door handle themselves has your lock function here and then the sensor behind here to unlock. There is no key code here. It is on the door as opposed to mounted on the B pillar here. I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse too of what it looks like from the side. Now this is again obviously a four door and I like the four door a lot better. I mean it just comes down to preference but four door kind of suits depending on your lifestyle might suit you a little bit better if you have family. Here's a look at the back of the tire and rim and then your door your fuel door is on the driver's side as well shut that up right here just a little bit of a click and that opens up now like i mentioned too but the roof it is carbonized gray it is not black you can't get black for a very long time uh ford says till 2023 potentially so it is carbonized gray and that is why i said with the front grille i think it looks a lot better in the badlands as opposed to the wild track which, which is black but it is a personal preference now that is pretty much it for the side of the bronco um, let's take a look at the rear end and we'll go over some of the cool stuff at the back of the bronco okay so coming into the rear end of the bronco i do find it less beefier than the sasquatch obviously because of the 33s as opposed to the 35s but i don't mind this stance you don't see much of an offset with the fenders and the tires kind of lines up pretty nice there I like the tail lights, they're LEDs. We have the Bronco logo on the right side here. This does have the trailer tow package, which can tow up to 3,500 pounds. You got your tow hooks here. Now, I do see here that there's two tow hooks as opposed to one uh, on the back, uh, the wild track I reviewed. Uh, the wild track looks like it only has one on, I think it was this side, but that's one thing to note. You do have some parking sensors back here. So two on here, two over here, and then two over on this side. Your exhaust is over here as well, just a single outlet. Tires in the back with your rear view camera parked right here. It's pretty much it before we enter the Bronco. I'll open the door here so you guys can see. There is, I find the strut, and I had a conversation with my buddy about this. I find the strut here about three quarters of the way. It, it's very, the tension's very strong. So one thing to note is the back door can open the a lot uh, it can open a very in a very wide angle um, but one thing to know again when it's about three quarters of the way open you, you will find some tension however it's pretty much light when you open it it's nothing you know heavy or anything like that and then you can open this up just like this and it gives you ample amount of room back here tons and tons of room one thing that I didn't know which I was shown um, was when you take the roof off or the back here this little light switch here you can actually plug it into here so it doesn't get dirty or anything gets inside and your little switch here for your wipe your washer fluid you can plug it into here and those are what your two little compartments are for which is awesome especially if you're going to take this roof off you got a compartment down here a little bit of storage and over here is your 12 volt with the light here that has the bronco logo and if we open this up back here we've got a little bit of storage and your tire jack as well as your funnel for your fuel if needed be. Some hooks on four corners, the lasso if you ever need to tighten anything down. Very versatile. And this, I don't think this one has the Bang & Olufsen in here, but if we look at the corners here, we got two speakers. So one there and one over here. So when you take the top off, I think it looks really, really good. But that is pretty much it for the back of the Bronco. I'll show you this and give you another look. One thing to note is when you do close this, okay, I'll show you. When you close this up and then when you shut the door, if you wanted to open the back uh, back window and you wanted to not maybe open this a little bit, you do get caught here with the, with the seal. So you do have to open this, I would say about just almost 90 degrees to actually get this to open. So just one thing to, to note when you want to open that back window but that is it for the back I'll give you a little bit of a look underneath too so you can see the suspension there you go Bilstein's look great and that completes the back let's take a look at the rear seats
Alrighty, so hopping into the back of the Badlands Bronco. So I've rolled the windows down so you can see what it's like without the windows up. I like the interior here. It's got some soft touch material here. It's gray and down here as well. Now we have in the Badlands some orange coloring around which we'll get into but everything else here down here is plastic again so it's very easy to clean and to wash off so all soft touch material you got your lock here door handle and we'll take a look at the seats themselves so headrests look good we have some orange stitching as well if you can see take this bag off so you can see a little bit of what it's like so over here we have some orange stitching on the headrest themselves and we'll look down black leather which is optional so here's the back of the seats we have some mesh here as well these seats do fold down so there's a little latch here pull that forward and actually we got to put the headrest down so it almost gives you a flat floor which is very convenient but it's not fully flat you have a little bit of an incline here but it's nice to have that option to have a 60 40 split there's some cup holders in here as well and we'll get into the center stack here in the back seats. So your window controls are here. And if you open these up, we have USB, USB-C, and your household outlet. Now, it does say no step here. So just be careful if someone's going to step here because I'm sure people are going to fall if they do step here because it's pretty slippery. That's it for the back. Let's take a look at the front. Alrighty, so hopping into the front of the Bronco. So we have that same interior, the gray material soft touch to rest your hands or your, your whole arm actually. Soft touch material down here. Nice little handle here, some storage and plastic down here as well. Power seat controls are here, lumbar support. Take a look at the seat again. We have some orange on the stitching and that carries through with the Bronco logo kind of stamped right here into the seat. But I really like that orange coloring i think it looks good handle here to help you get in as opposed to being up here some controls are here as well now this not having the plastic front bumper you actually do not get the fog lights so we have your mirror control or your mirror lights here um, these are your automatic lights here which you can put on auto and then your auto dimming for your interior lights but we'll go into that orange interior which kind of carries throughout around the the badlands but that's it before we head in one thing to note is this does have the soft sound detonating headliner which i've seen it work with it raining um and what i mean by that when it was raining i didn't hear a lot of the sound from the top i felt like this actually helped a lot especially when it was raining and raining hard so that is one thing to add when you are going to option that it does work very well so that is it before we hop in let's take a look at the interior all right so let's start with the interior i do have the car in accessory power mode so we can see what it's like with you know everything on so we'll start with the steering wheel it is leather wrapped there is no orange stitching around the steering wheel unfortunately which i think it would look a lot better but that is that over here are your controls oh we have a plane We've achieved takeoff! Yeah, yeah, I'm by an airport. Anyways, these controls here are to control your center screen. So we'll go over it pretty quickly. So this little three line button is your menu button and you can go through your my view so you can customize what views you want on, your trip and fuel, your off-road status. I'll go through a lot of the off-road stuff so you guys can see. And let's see here, off-road status. So this is pretty cool. It gives you a little bit of angles when you're off-roading, uh, your pitch and roll, power distribution, tire pressure, gauges, and let's see, turbo boost, oil temperature. There is one I like, to transmission temperature, battery voltage. Yeah, well, I like this, this angle the most. That's pretty cool. So that is that for the off-road status. You got nav, phone, you have your audio and settings. My view is pretty customizable. Right now we have calm, uh, your fuel economy, your trip, uh, your off-road, which I like a lot, tire pressure, and uh, you can configure, right? The nice thing is with calm view, kind of just gives you the whole screen with just your RPMs and your kilometers, which I think looks a little bit cleaner. But all that's just controlled with these arrows here, your back button, and um, 
yeah, that's it. These buttons here. These are your toggles for your infotainment, which we'll get into. This is your call hang up and call pickup voice command. Now over here, since this does have the uh, lugs pack, you do get your adaptive cruise, which is awesome. So you can set that just pushing this button here and then you can adjust the gap adjustments here. But when you do push it, it does give you a little bit of a picture here with the Bronco and then your distance. So when you push this button here, it will adjust your distance accordingly. So all that's set through here, your volume control. On the this side here is your window stock for your wipers. So your rear is pushing this forward or back and then pushing this forward or back as well. Now, this is your fan. Obviously there's fans all around, but they do have some orange coloring in all of them, which you can see and we'll go over. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the center here. I like the speedometer too being analog on the side, which is awesome. I think it's nice to have that classic elegant look there. Now we'll start here with the dash. Now it is in a hard touch plastic material, but it is meant for if it were to get dirty, it's easy to clean. It does have actually your Bang & Olufsen sound system in here. Over here, what you could do is you could option to get an accessory rack here and you can put like your GoPros and your phones to videotape basically how you're off-roading. So with these controls here and then we can open this up and it gives you your USB and USB-C plugs. So if you need to charge anything, you can do so. Broncos stamps here, and this is a hard touch plastic, which is pretty hard. I like the feel of it. And then that gray carries throughout over here. Down below is your glove box, which will open. And it actually is pretty deep. It's a decent size, gotta say. Up top here, we'll go over some of the buttons. This is your sway bar disconnect, uh, front locker, rear locker, um, your trail turn assist, your trash control, and your hazards. So all of them are up here. Now let's get into the screen. This is the uh, Sync 4 12 inch screen uh, that's new for uh, Ford, which I really like. It's very easy to use. And there's a bunch of hotkeys that help you kind of navigate yourself around. So we'll start here with audio. So hit audio, just pops up here, phone, navigation, your apps, settings and your features so one cool thing too with bronco which they've added is zone lighting so zone lighting is a cool feature where you can turn on all the exterior lights at once depending on where you are maybe you just want to turn on your back lights your front lights your whatever lights um, you can turn it on so the car has to be on um, it won't turn it on when you're in accessory power mode which kind of sucks but it is nice that they actually have this here but let's go back to the infotainment very easy to use one interesting feature is you can hit this button and you can cycle through different statuses you want on the, the vehicle. So one cool thing is, let's just say if you want your navigation to be a little bit bigger than the audio, you can push this little arrow here and it just swaps it over. So just like that. I like this view a lot too, but personally I just like my audio here and my nav here. But again, it's just personal preference. Very easy to use. Uh, it does have rewinding Sirius XM radio. And since Sync 4 is out, I've had nothing but great things to say about it. But that's it for the screen. One other thing to note is the camera angles are awesome. So this does have the 360 camera with the high package. You gotta get the high package. And good quality. I have nothing but uh, good things to say about the cameras. They're not, um, you know, some like 360p resolution. They're actually really, really good. So to access your camera, you just hit this. This is only to access your front camera. When you do go in reverse, it does show you your rear camera. Down below, uh, your button, the button everyone's a fan of is your auto stop start, <laughs> not. This is your back parking sensors. You can turn them off. Maybe if you're trail ring, it might be a good idea. Volume two knobs, down below your climate controls. Now this does have a heated steering wheel, which is included in the high package or the lugs package. Can't remember, but it is included in one of those two. When you get the lugs package, it includes the high package and the mid, so don't have to worry about that. Heated seats, no cooled seats in this option. Dual zone climate, and your fan controls down here as well. Over on the back end of things, we have USB, USB-C, and wireless charging. One other cool thing too they have in all Broncos is the designed and engineered in Dearborn, Michigan, USA, built at Michigan Assembly Plant. So they have those on all the Broncos. Little nice detail there. I like the shifter, feels good, nice to touch, um, very easy to use, it's just a general shifter, <laughs> nothing too crazy. Your manual mode's on the left, and the Bronco logo is here as well. Couple cup holders here, there's only two, and down below are your GOAT modes, so go on any terrain mode, 
and what they basically do is change your off-road settings depending on where you are so we'll go over the four so you have two high four low four high for auto which I like the four auto option this is your kind of off-road cruise control which is pretty cool goat modes so when you turn this knob it is going to give you a little bit of a animation of where your settings are depending on your trail so one cool thing so you have rock crawl here and you have baja sand mud rats slippery eco and the normal i like the animation it looks really clean it looks really awesome i like how they do that really cool attention to detail now down below there we have your window controls which are all auto cool feature locking the windows and then here are your mirror controls so now i did mention to you guys that when you are looking on the passenger side and like i mentioned you see how the mirrors cut off just a little bit um it is the the mirrors are different so and what i mean by that is if you stare here you don't see that there is a cut off piece here like there's no sharp point it's just kind of square on this mirror do you see how they cut off a little bit of it i guess they knew that um you'd be cut off just a little bit nothing that would maybe give you bad visibility but it is something to note so that's pretty much it for the center stack here. I'm going to show you guys the center console here. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. Uh, we have a 12 volt here. You can put here just for more storage. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing, nothing too fancy down here. That is it for the interior, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of the orange coloring in the Badlands. I actually like it. I think it looks good and kind of just gives the, the interior a little bit of uh, some color as opposed to just being all black. But uh, let me know what you think, and um, let's take a look at the price of this thing, because it is actually pretty pricey. Okay, so let's take a look at the price here. Now, a lot of you guys are going to be surprised. I was surprised, too, of how expensive this one actually was. Now, this is the Badlands. It's pretty much a loaded Badlands. Um, and, yeah, so the price of this one is 72134 Canadian, and it's got pretty much every option as opposed to the sasquatch so we can go through here so it's got the 334 equipment um and then here are the options on it so it's got the v6 eco boost which we went over the 10 speed which they've added to it because it's not standard uh the hard molded uh hard top which is 795 and these are all in canadian dollars the towing package your 17 inch rims and the leather seats which are optional as well that is it for the badlands price um again I, I do agree it is expensive let's take a look around the exterior and i'll give you my final thoughts so that pretty much wraps up my review of the bronco uh badlands i think this one is it well it's more expensive than the wild track i reviewed well both wild tracks i reviewed it's because it has every option on it except for the sasquatch package now I'm assuming people are going to be pissed off at the price. I mean, it, it is expensive. I'm not going to, you know, deny that. But it's going to come down to, obviously, if you want the car or not and what the options you want are on it. Um, yeah, just let me know what you guys think of this one. I, like I said, I like this carbonized gray grill a little bit more. But uh, it's going to be a personal preference, guys. So that concludes this video. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you in my next video. Hopefully, it's another Bronco. Talk soon.